Welcome to 4C Visions. I'm your host, R.V. Height, Director of Communications at Central Carolina Community College. In this edition of 4C Visions, it is my pleasure to welcome Vicki Wessner, CCCC Department Chair for the Dental Hygiene and Dental Assisting Programs. She is a graduate of Fayetteville Technical Community College and NC State University. Vicki is involved in a number of professional organizations, including her service as Secretary for the North Carolina Dental Assistance Association. A resident of Carthage, her husband Matt is a graduate of the CCCC Tool and Dye Program. Vicki, welcome to 4C Visions. Well, thank you for having me here. Well, it's great to have you. Vicki, share with our audience the difference between the dental hygiene and dental assisting programs and who would be the ideal student for either of these programs. Okay. Our dental assisting program is a three semester program and our graduates can work in a variety of dental offices such as orthodontics, uh, pediatrics, endodontics, uh, periodontics. So they're prepared for any of those offices. And then our hygiene program is five semesters. Of course, the hygienist is the person who cleans your teeth, uh, but it takes four semesters of our students treating patients in our clinical practice um, to really learn how to clean teeth well. So it takes a little longer for that program. And uh, students who do well in our programs, we really like to see a patient with a heart for health care and to truly see a patient go from a state of disease to a state of health. Well, that's great. Well, these programs are in high demand. How many students do you have in each of the programs and what can potential students expect about CCCC admission standards for these programs? Okay, well, we take 18 students in each program and we just went through the admissions process. And for example, we had um, over 90 applicants, qualified yeah. applicants for the hygiene program. So it's very competitive. Uh, so we do urge our students to um, make really good grades and uh, to focus on what they can do to, to score well. We have a competitive admissions process and so all the co-requisite courses, they want to get those really high grades and uh, to, to truly prepare for our programs. So when do uh, students actually uh uh, apply for the program? They apply every January and uh, we usually know by March who will make it into the program and so they're receiving letters now as to who has been accepted in and then we'll start in August with one group of hygiene and one group of dental assisting students. When well, our dental programs are housed in a new facility, the Keller Health Sciences Building, our students uh, learn on modern equipment and these technological advances must be great for both our dental hygiene and our dental assisting programs. Yes. Um, I started with a college in 2007, and even at that time, it, everything was brand new and were the, the greatest uh, equipment you could ask for. And moving into this new building, we have even, even more uh, the, of the newest equipment and uh, still actually getting some of that installed now. So it is important that our students experience the, the best that we possibly can offer them to be prepared for those dental offices. Well, this yeah. is an exciting time for sure because it's a beautiful facility. Yes, and I know uh, you and the students are glad to be in it. Uh, Vicki, what are the accreditation standards like for our dental program? So we are accredited through the American Dental Association with a commission on dental accreditation. And every seven years, we go through a thorough process of uh, creating self-studies of both of our programs, really thick books with mm -hmm. examples of meeting those guidelines. And then um, program directors from other states, colleges, and universities visit us. There's usually five visitors, and they do a thorough review to ensure that we are following those accreditation guidelines. How does student success factor into our dental program? We continually review as faculty. We have meetings with both programs. We discuss our students and how they're doing and what resources we can utilize with the college, such as the Academic Assistance Center and tutoring or the library. So we, we really try to help our students who may be struggling a bit to be successful. Now, when our students are thinking about applying for the program, what sort of things are you looking for with those students in terms of what should they be doing uh, in high school to kind of prepare 
for mm -hmm. this program? Well, the, the CCP program is certainly helping our students get a few of those dental courses out of the way, um, it, but it's the co-requisite courses that they're going to get points through that, com that competitive admissions um, uh, setup that we have with the college. And so the more points they get, uh, the higher the grades they have, that's going to make them much more competitive. But I, I can tell you our hygiene students, usually the top four, five, six, may be 4.0 students who are, so it's very wow. competitive. Wow. Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. That means uh, great students and mm -hmm. uh, great employees in the future, that's for sure. That's right. What are the costs for a student in our dental program, and can you speak to offsetting student costs? So we do have the cost on our website, so assisting um, may range up to close to 7000 for three semesters, and hygiene a bit more expensive being two years. It's close to 13000 but, but the students do have to purchase instruments and um, uh, tooth models, and, and those things make the programs pretty expensive. But fortunately, the vendors that we purchase these instruments from, like the hygiene cassettes are about $1,200, but in private practice, it would be more than double that. Mm -hmm. And so we do get a huge savings. We, we certainly try to help the students, of course, with providing so much equipment that we already have. And of course, uh, Scott, there are scholarship opportunities at CCCC, mm -hmm. so if you are interested in the dental program or any of our programs at the college, uh, you can look into our uh, scholarship program. Uh, Vicki, community outreach is, is, is an important part mm -hmm. of the dental program, including the yearly Give Kids a Smile program. Talk about the importance of community outreach for our students. Okay. Um, any healthcare provider should want to reach out to the community and we try to instill that value into our students. It is also an accreditation standard so we have community courses for both groups of students and they uh, we urge volunteerism of course with like the Baptist Men's Bus, uh, St. Joseph's of the Pines, their dental bus, Missions of Mercy um, and we always acknowledge those students who who have completed many uh, community hours so um, it is our hope that that's what they'll do once they start working out in private practice is to continue to go out to the community because there are so many people do not have dental insurance. And when we do have these programs, uh, we do uh, tell others about it and advertise those mm -hmm. programs. So mm -hmm. uh, be looking if you're interested in those programs. It's a great opportunity. Talk a little bit about Give Kids, or Give Kids a Smile. Okay. Well, Give Kids a Smile is a, is a national event held by the, the dental society across the, the country, of course, um, headed up by the American Dental Association. So it, it, it's an effort to reach out to kids, usually about first grade, who have not had dental care and they're just getting their six year permanent molars and it, it's really important to place sealants on those teeth because kids can rapidly get decay on the tops of the teeth if they aren't sealed, especially if they're not routinely going to a dental office for cleanings. And so we, we try to educate the children and uh, about brushing and flossing, but uh, trying to get those sealants on as early as possible so we can avoid that decay. Well, I'm interested also in our graduates. How, what are the job opportunities like in both of these fields? Okay, well, many of our dental assisting students, before they graduate, they actually secure jobs. Um, their last two semesters, they are at rotation sites in various dental offices, and so the dentists find out about these great students and they wanna hire them before they even graduate. And then for our dental hygiene students, um, many of them may work for the, there's various temp agencies in the state um, to help them figure out where they want to work because many like to move to the larger cities and uh, but many do remain locally um, because they're, they're, they're just more opportunities of course in the city areas but um, they're employed very quickly after graduation as well. That's exciting uh, yes. in this job market. What message do you have for anyone who may be considering attending CCCC and concentrating in one of our dental programs? Okay, I think the biggest priority is to make sure in your heart that you really want to treat patients. And sometimes we have students to start the program, then they decide they can't be that close to a patient or that, you know, there's things that come with unhealthy mouths that they don't realize they can do. But 
So we, we do urge students to do observation hours. Um, there's more points if you do the observation hours. And that helps the students see, you know, can they do this? Because cleanings aren't as simple as we think they are for many people. So definitely the observation. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure that's, that's <coughs> true. What do you tell, uh, just out of curiosity, what do you tell uh, students as far as dealing with maybe uh, patients like myself who have a, are a little nervous about working uh, with dentistry? Uh, that certainly comes the first semester. Now we actually do interviews with our students before they start the program. We sit them down and talk about, okay, do you realize these are the things you're going to see and, and we want to make sure before they start that program that this is what they really want to do. And we try to collect data on the students as well for any kind of hardships that may prevent them from being successful as well. But uh, uh, I think those observation hours really help them see as to ensure that they really see everything that a hygienist and a dental assistant do. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. Vicki, how did you decide on a career in the dental field and later your work in the D, uh, dental program here at CCCC? Mm -hmm. Well, I originally went to NC State right after high school and my goal was to go into health professions. Um, of course, we all tend to go a little tangent here or there, but found myself as a single parent and decided to look back at dentistry because I looked at dentistry in the past and I was able to uh, enroll in FTCC right away in their dental hygiene program. And as a single parent, it was the best thing I could have ever done. I was able to support myself um, and my daughter as a single parent with this degree that was just a two year degree. Um, so it, it's, it's been a great experience for me to go that route. What do you hear from dentists about our program? So we, of course, we have an advisory committee that we meet with twice a year, and that's always our biggest question. How are we doing? What can we do better? And, uh, and our students rotate through those offices, so they do know firsthand, and they do make suggestions with maybe more technology and um, different types of trainings. And, uh, but we, we hear very positive feedback from, from our advisory committee members. And while we have many uh, popular programs here at CCCC, our dental programs are among our most popular. And as Vicki says, there's always uh, many more candidates who want to mm -hmm. be in the program uh, than we have spaces available. And uh, so if you're interested in the program, study hard and uh, make sure to apply on time. And uh, I think you'll find it's just an outstanding program with wonderful job opportunities. Uh, for you. Vicki, one more question. What do you okay. think makes Central Carolina Community College and its dental program so special? Oh, well, there's so many services here at the college, um, and, and it, it worries me I won't even say them all, but between that, the Academic Assistance Center, the library, the CCP programs, um, our success coaches, and the list just goes on and on. The outcomes and assessment team and looking at uh, how, we, how we can help students who have a disadvantage or who are highly likely to not be successful. Um, I've been here almost 12 years, this year be 12 years, and I have seen this college just grow and grow and uh, do such wonderful things. And the theme has always been student success, and it, it makes me happy to be a part of that student success. Well, that's outstanding and Vicki we're fortunate to have you on our staff and we thank you for your service to the college and we will return to 4C Visions after these messages. Morning Gary. We are GetSchooled.com. You want a college education don't you? You know you do. Uh, yeah but I don't know where to start. That's why we're here. We're free. Handsome. Oh, I think we're breathtaking. And here to guide you through every step of the way, starting with attendance. <laughs> Gary, financial aid forms. Biology homework, G. What? I got this. <coughs> Is that brand? Colleges love extracurricular activities. Well, uh, chess really isn't my thing. I got this. Doesn't matter. Go ahead. Picking a college, man. You and us go together like tacos and Tuesday. And I love tacos. Fire and ice. Those don't really go together. Go to GetSchool.com for more info. 
I'm a teacher. Let me tell you what I make. I make learning a privilege, not a chore. And frustration, a tool, not an obstacle. I make working hard seem easy, and giving up impossible. And then we're going to turn the lights and everybody look up. I make an old subject feel like a fresh thought. What's your reaction? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And unconventional methods. Uh, okay, what else? Common. This is their world. There's nothing. And then they die. Go ahead, go, go, go. I'm a teacher. I make. Listen to me. I am captain of the track team. And, and if I'm late, she doesn't I'm really think she's going to get out of here, does she? Be nice. She's new. Hello, is anyone there? <gasps> wow. Even from our standards, you look awful. Oh, sweetie, what happened? Me? My friend Becky got to talk to this super cute boy, and I tried to act like I wasn't jealous, but I so totally was. And then out of nowhere, this concrete barrier just popped up. Maybe it was a semi. You mean you were driving? Yeah, I mean, I know the whole eyes on the road thing, but this was a super important text. Maybe you have to know, Becky. Texting? Great. But I, it was only like five seconds, and I'm a really, really fast texter, so it wasn't even a big deal. Actually, has she texted me back yet? Wow, I get like no bars in this place. I wonder if they have Wi-Fi here. Welcome back to 4C Visions. Today we welcome Mary Ann Ockampaugh, who is the Central Carolina Community College Department Chair for Business Technologies. She has been with the college for five and a half years. She has her master's in healthcare administration and a bachelor's in healthcare management from Franklin University. Currently, Mary Ann is attending NC State University for doctoral studies in adult education and community college leadership. She is the president of the American Academy of Professional Coders Sanford Chapter. In her spare time, she likes to read and spend time with her family and fur babies. Marianne, welcome to 4C Visions. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Well, let's talk about those fur babies first. Oh, Tell me about your fur babies. I have three small fur babies that I love to death. Oh, wow. I love my dogs. I just like animals in particular. Yeah, so. pets are special, that's for sure. <laughs> Well, the CCCC Business Technologies Department has a variety of program offerings. Marianne, please share with our audience information on each of these programs that are available. We do have a variety of um, curriculum. So we have our business administration. Those are going to be business classes, management, some finance, some accounting, um, some marketing. We have our accounting program, which of course is going to help students get ready to um, entry level CPA firms transfer if they need to. We have business administration, human resource management, which is going to help with those human resource, um, compliance, regulation, hiring. We have medical office administration, which is going to help with patient coordination, front office, medical coding and billing. We have healthcare management, which helps get your foot in the door for entry level healthcare management positions, patient services, coordination, patient flow. And then we also have office administration, which is more of a clerical, secretarial, uh, customer service type of curriculum. So there's a lot to offer here at CCCC. There is. Now of these various programs, which programs are the most popular and the ones with the greatest job opportunities? I would have to say probably degree programs. Our business administration is the most popular. It does have, uh, it's multifaceted, so you can use it in different arenas. We also have smaller short-term certificates, medical coding and billing being one of the most favorite. It is to help you get your foot in the door for medical coding and billing reimbursement. And then around this time of year, we also have an income tax preparation certificate, which is very, um, tends to be one of the favorites when we're in tax season. I bet so, that's interesting. Well, healthcare management is one of your areas of expertise. What was it about that field that intrigued you to want to study that and become involved in that work? I honestly did not choose healthcare, it chose me. <laughs> I was actually a displaced worker 
and it was recommended that I look into healthcare because the healthcare opportunities are always growing. I didn't want to be a displaced worker again, so I came to Central Carolina Community College and they helped get my foot in the door and I started as a product and working out in the industry and now I'm here getting to share my experience with my students. I want to talk to you a little bit about that. As a displaced worker, what was it that attracted you to CCCC? I think it was things that I heard from the community and their willingness to help me. It was a rough time, had a family, wondered what we were gonna do next. And I was welcomed and there was all these resources just to help me get back on track and figure out what I wanted to be when I grew up. Wow, and that is the case for many of our students. They're not necessarily students right out of high school. They're students who wanna come here who may be displaced or have other situations, uh, want a change in career. So if that's the case, Central Carolina Community College welcomes you with open arms and uh, a lot of Mary Ann's programs may be uh, of very interest to you uh, as you uh, look for that job that you're seeking. Uh, Mary Ann, what kinds of qualifications are needed for students who are interested in any of the business technology programs? Well, our business technology programs are open access, so we don't have a waiting list, we don't have any Prerequis prerequisites that we ask for. We do look at our students for somebody who is a critical thinker, um, is very organized and determined and ready to get in there and get in the workforce. Well, are job opportunities readily available for business technologies graduates and how is the job market for graduates at this time? There are, um, a lot of our graduates are going out there and working. Um, Caterpillar, Bellflex, um, Sanford contractors, some of our small local physician's office, the hospital. So the jobs are definitely out there. Our graduates are finding their placements. That's exciting. What message do you have for anyone who may be considering attending CCCC and concentrating in one of these business technology programs? With business technologies, again, it, it is multifaceted. So it's one of those programs that you can really apply anywhere. So if you wanna open your own business or if you wanna help run somebody else's business, get into management, work in a bank, work in local industry, you can use what you learn here, your skills and your talents, just about anywhere. Wow, that's exciting. What kinds of clubs and networking opportunities are available for our business accounting and coding students? That's one thing that our department likes to focus on. We have quite a few different clubs. We have our PBL club. Um, what they are is a leadership club. They go out and do competitions and hone those skills and those traits that are needed out in the workforce. We have our AAPC Sanford chapter, which is a continuing education and networking um, uh, opportunity for our coding and our healthcare students. We have our Toastmasters club, which works very closely with our HR club. Toastmasters helps you with those presentations and getting out there and talking to people. And again, like I said, we really focus on networking. How can we hone your skills and introduce you to the people that you need to get your opportunities? Uh, let's talk a little bit about the PBL club particularly. I know that that particular club, you have a lot of students in that and a lot of opportunities for national and state competitions that we've done very well in. We have, we, we seem to place very well, both state and nationally. We have another competition getting ready to come up here soon. We've actually entered, um, invited our CCP students and our early college students to start participating in some of those things so we can get them started early. It's a really good way to make sure those critical thinking skills and to apply what they're learning here before they get out in the job market. How are these clubs and networking opportunities advantageous for our students? Being able to apply and see what the real world is, talking to people that are already in industry. We do invite our partners to come to our AAPC meetings, to our Toastmasters, so they get to see what's out there and get to hear it from people that have experienced it. Now of all the clubs, uh, excuse me, of all the students that you have in the various programs, how many total students are we talking about? Oh, wow. Um, currently, probably 200, 300 wow. students that are full-time. 
And between I, all six programs. And I would imagine that many of them are your best ambassadors, your graduates are your they best are. ambassadors for other students who may come into the program. Absolutely. We, we want to make sure when our students leave that they have a sense of pride of what the college has given them and what they can take back to our community partners. Well, that's great. Well, you are involved in Cougar Closet. What is Cougar Closet and how does it operate? Our Cougar Closet is one of our PBL community service um, projects. So what it is, is it's gently used professional attire that we station here on Lee campus so that our students, when they need to go to competitions or they have interviews or if they just need clothes to get started in their profession, we can actually help furnish that for them so that they're confident and they're going out there ready wow. to start. Now, do you accept uh, donations for these? We do. We're always looking for more donations so that we can reach out and help more students. Definitely. And are you looking for money or clothes or what works best? We prefer the donation of the clothes, but again, anything that helps our students, something we can offer them, we're always willing to work with our partners. And if someone, uh, one of our viewers is interested in donating, what would they need to do? They would just need to contact one of the business department faculty. So myself, Shirley Reitzka, or Michael Fan. They can also reach out to Pam Riddle on Harnett County campus, and we'd be able to help with those donations and make sure they got to the people that needed them. And, and the students that have participated in this program, how have they felt about it? Is this something that you're finding that it's becoming more and more uh, uh, acceptable or students coming to you more and more for this kind of help? They are, and we're still really trying to get the word out about our Cougar Closet. So it's open to any student. They don't have to be in uh, the business technologies department. So we really want to make sure that we're reaching and expanding that, but they come to us and it is a really good way. We have students that just might need that extra help. They're not sure what a professional dress is. So we're there to make sure that they have that opportunity. And I think that's one of the exciting things about our college is that we do uh, offer a lot of different programs such as Cougar Closet to help our students and uh, uh, in any way that we can. And so we're certainly grateful that uh, your department has taken this project on and uh, it's, it's certainly a great benefit. Marianne, as a former student, uh, what kind of advice would you give to anyone, not just someone looking to go in your department, but anyone who may be considering CCCC for a student, if, as a school? I would recommend come and talk to us. CCCC is definitely student driven. We're here to make sure that our students succeed. We want to help. If you just grab somebody on the sidewalk, they'll make sure you get where you need to go. I, that's, I think that's what attracted me to CCCC when I was a student and now has attracted me as my career. I believe in what we do and I'm proud of what we do. And I want everybody to feel that also. Was, what was it like to have been a student to have come back here to work? I think I actually took more pride in it. Knowing that CCCC helped get me where I was and now that I can give back to the college, to the community, to our students, it just it's, it gives me a very large sense of pride that I get to be part of something so great. And I think Mary Ann is uh, not unique in that we have a number of our faculty and staff who uh, attended CCCC or who have lived in the community for many years that have come in to, uh, to work and I, I think you're right. We all feel that way that we want to be here to help our students and uh, to help others and, and see the greatness that we're able to see here. So. Um, that's wonderful. Marianne, what do you think makes Central Carolina Community College and its business technologies program special? I would have to say that it, our talented faculty are amazing. We try to make sure that we can live up to the CCCC mission and provide what our students need. And then of course, I'm a little biased, but we do have amazing students. It makes it worth everything that we do every day. Talk a little bit about your faculty. I know that you're very proud of them. I, I am very proud of them. Um, I have a very talented set of faculty. We work very closely together. We have, between us, we help with a lot of the clubs on campus. We try to make sure that we're reaching out to our students, being the best advisors and mentors that we can be. I'm very proud of them. So it's not just a matter of being in the classroom. It goes beyond that. Absolutely. We're here to help the student holistically. We want to make sure they have everything they need, whether it's something personal or something on campus, we're here to help. Marianne, share with our audience, if someone is interested in the business technologies program, 
How can they get more information? Reach out to any of my faculty. You can also reach out to our admissions. Um, go to the CCCC webpage. We do have quite a bit of information there and all of our contact information is there. Feel free to call us at any time. We will find answers for you. And so once again, if you're interested in business technologies or any of our programs at Central Carolina Community College, visit our website, www.cccc.edu. And I would also invite you to visit the CCCC Facebook page or Twitter account uh, as we're constantly updating those to share more information about our programs here at CCCC. Well, Mary Ann, thank you so much for being with us today and for all you do. Thank you. And viewers, thank you for being with us on 4C Visions.